everyone, today is a momentous occasion. And in honor of this momentous occasion, I have decided to wear red. And apparently so is my chin. I clipped myself shaving in the shower. It's fine. It's whatever. Anyway, we have gotten all the pictures, all of the information on the UCS gunship that is going to be released this August 1st along with the rest of the Star Wars wave. That is right. Lego stores are about to get crazy August 1st. Anyway, um, I am so pumped for this set. This set looks so good. And just my initial reaction is, is wow. It, it's just absolutely everything I expected and honestly more. Um, get some housekeepings out of the way. I guess, you know, a couple of downs. Most of them are all pros. Um, I'm just going to get the cons out of the way right in the front of the video just so that we can uh, continue on. Okay, yep. Yeah. Imperial logo on the box art, um, that's a little bit of a bummer, but like, I mean, to be honest, if I were to, if I were to ask you to draw the Imperial logo and the Republic logo, I bet 80% of you wouldn't know the difference and couldn't draw it. So like, you know what? There you go. People make mistakes. Sure, you know, Lego has a bunch of people, but like, let's be honest, how many of those people are like legitimate Star Wars fans? I mean, I'm hoping the people who make Star Wars sets are Star Wars fans, but like, I mean, are they like diehard fans like us? I don't know. Anyway, that's a little bit of a downer, uh, but hey, it's cool. You know, if you get one of the first sets, it's a pretty cool box art. Anyway, uh, this could be rare and exclusive. And so the next one is, of course, two minifigs. We kind of knew this. Uh, we already had rumors of a Mace Windu. It is a newer Mace Windu. He has like little splotches of mud on his torso looks pretty cool um and you know he classic very well done leg design like um it's a better improvement and it's more accurate than the um than the one we got in 2013 with the ATTE walker and then we also have an, a new and improved uh clone commander uh the yellow um decaled clone he could technically pass as commander pawns i mean like if he is mace windu's commander Technically, that guy's Commander Pons in Episode 2. Anyway, so we're going to Commander Pons and a Mace Windu, both two newly revised minifigs. But UCS set, not about the minifigs, really, uh, because it's about the set itself. And let me say, this is beautiful. And do I have more blood on my chin? I do. Huh. I'm bleeding red today. I'm bleeding Republic. The set, first of all, is just amazing. It is practically two times the size of the 2013 Republic gunship. It's that big. Uh, the color scheme, I I'm just like, I'm blown away, first of all, by how great this set looks. The wingspan, the length, the height, the girth, everything, it's, gosh, it's amazing. And there's actually quite a bit of functionality for it being a UCS set, actually, um, such as the cockpits. First of all, yes, those are new printed cockpit designs, which look amazing on the inside. There's control panels and they have a pretty nice, you know, pilot seat. Now, obviously you put a minifig, in. you can put a minifig in. It's gonna look a little weird because the set itself is practically the ratio of one to two of a minifig. It's not one on one. Uh, so it does look a little silly, uh, but you can put a minifig in if you so choose. So. That is cool. That's already functionality. You have the bubble turrets on the side, which I'm just so in love that LEGO finally was able to figure out how to make it a full sphere. Now, it looks a little off kilter, and the reason why is because um, LEGO needed that ring in the center between the two domes, which makes it a little bit taller, which makes it an oblate spheroid and not an actual perfect sphere. But 
honestly, I think it looks good. I don't care that it looks a little bit skinny because they look freaking amazing. And you can also put minifigs in there as well. So that is also a cool functionality feature. You also have the doors that swing open. You have low missiles on the inside of the doors, which I didn't know this, but apparently that is like accurate. I didn't know that the insides of the doors originally had like missile bays. That's pretty cool. The back door can drop down. Um, I'm actually wondering how big, the, like if, because you know I, I'm not gonna be able to really comprehend it until I have it in my hands. I'm wondering if I could use like, I'm sure I could, my custom ATRT and have it walk out the back of the door of the gunship, sort of like the Battle of Umbara. Because if I can, that would be a cool scene to recreate and I might just do that for I, um, the next Clone Wars mock. Anyway. Uh, but the back door opens, the swinging doors close and open as well. The stand is pretty nice. I should probably have mentioned that. It puts at a very nice angle, makes it look very, very sleek. You have the domes on the side, you have the missile bays underneath the wings, like so. And then, of course, we have the back turret. And on top, you have, like, the missile bays that rotate into the engines. Um, I mean, they just turn. But that is... I don't know. That was a cool functionality. And honestly, looking at these pictures, the top looks just like the movie. Like, it's, it's so accurate. The only thing I might have to harp about is the engines look a little wonky. They look a little bit too prismatic. Uh, I don't even know if that's a word, but I just made it up. Um, I wish they were more rounder. But... I think they look pretty darn nice. I also feel like the engines themselves are maybe a little bit too small. I don't know. Is that just me? That might be just me. I, I'm used to seeing like Clone Wars gunship engines being a little, I don't know, a little bit bigger. Anyway, I might be accurate to episode two. But overall, this set looks phenomenal. And oh my god, the inside of like the, the bay, you have like the pieces up there to make it look like, you know, you can, the passengers are hanging on to the top. And, uh, you know, you have control panels back there as well, which is also accurate. You just have a lot of stuff, man. Like, you know, this, this set is everything and anything that any Clone Wars LEGO fan could ever ask for and want. And, man, it's been a while since we've gotten a prequel UCS set, since Obi-Wan's Jedi Starfighter. I think that was in 2010 or 11. It's been a long time. So, long time coming. I'm so thankful that we're finally getting this. And it's coming out sooner than I expected. I was expecting fall, but August 1st. Uh, and just, I mean, 3,000, what, 800 something pieces, 3,700, something up there. $350 retail price in the USA. That is a good price per piece. So we're not getting, it doesn't feel like we're getting cheated or anything. That's a good um, price for this set. And I'm so ready to, I already have money set aside. I didn't know it had to be spent this soon, but I have money set aside. So I am so ready for this. It's going to be amazing. It's going to be a great, um, a great purchase. Uh, the, so I guess a couple things, um, how, my advice on if you want to get this beforehand, especially with that extra, that box art with the Imperial logo. Now, because this is going to be one of those like, oh, um, we messed up the box art, we'll just print them new from now on. This first initial wave, maybe the second, I doubt it, but this first initial wave of Lego sets for the Republic Gunship, they're gonna go like hotcakes. Uh, and the one of the reasons is going to be because you have that box art, it's gonna be different. It's going to be, it's gonna make that set even more exclusive to other people. And so there are gonna be some collectors who are going to want to get probably two gunships. They can have a Imperial logo gunship box art and a Republic, Imper uh, a Republic logo gunship box art. So if you're planning on getting it, it's going to be gone fast. So what you need to do is if you're going to plan on buying it online, either at the Lego store or whatever third party is selling it, you're going to want to be on there at least 30 minutes before it opens. And you're going to want to consistently be refreshing the page. You're going to want to make sure your internet connection is good. You're going to want to make sure all your information is like ready to go. Um, just make sure like no one else is using the Wi-Fi uh, <laughs> and just keep on refreshing the page. It's going to go in like three minutes. It's going to be insane. It's going to, it's going to feel like the Nebulon B frigate fiasco um, that happened. And uh, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if we got something maybe similar 
to an MLM beef, a frigate fiasco where like some people place in orders and then like I say, well, sorry, we're out of stock actually and the website just gonna keep up. There's gonna be a lot of people. It's gonna go. And then if you're planning on wanting to get one in person, which I am planning that out, I'm going to be going, actually, I'm going back to Illinois August 1st. <sighs> yeah, I'm going back August 1st. And so the plan is to get to Beachwood Mall Lego store in Ohio because that Lego store opens at noon on Sundays. And this could be August 1st. I'm planning on getting there an hour before. That's a little dumb of me. I'm going to admit, if I were you, I'd get there three hours before. That's not a hyperbole. That's not a hyperbolic statement. I would ideally get there three hours before. I just want to go back to school August 1st and I want to just hit a Lego store on the way back, and that Lego store happened to be a good one to hit, dependent based on it, and anyway. Um, yeah, I'm gonna get there an hour before, I'm gonna hope that um, I'm gonna be at least the 25th person in line, because each Lego store, it's, it depends on the popularity. Beachwood is a pretty central uh, place for Lego, so I'm assuming that store is gonna get 25 in stock. I'm gonna hope I can get, I. Ideally, to be comfortable, I'd like to be one of the first 10 people in line. And people will be waiting at the door for this. And so, an hour is pushing it, pushing my luck. But hey, we're going to do it. Going to make a vlog out of it. So, that's my advice to you. If you want to get a gun chip, if you don't get it that first initial wave, you're going to be waiting a good long while until you do. So, there you go. That is my thoughts on the use of gun chip. Um, please, and Solid Brook Studio said this in his video, but please do not buy from scalpers because if we buy from scalpers, then we're just, we're just helping them do it more. Like by giving in to the system, you are helping it grow and become more prominent. So please do not give in to scalpers. Do not buy from them. It's okay. Just wait, be patient. Honestly, having a gunship having a gunship 10 days before you would get one anyway like you'd have to ask yourself because scalpers are going to charge you like probably $700 for a $350 set like times two the price is it really worth paying another 350 bucks like rather than wait in 10 days or something like that like think about it $350 like versus just wait in 10 days I you could buy two gun chips with another $350. So just please don't give in to scalpers. It's really not that big of a deal. Think about it logically. You don't want to spend extra money on a set and you could get literally for cheaper. Plus you could get the Lego store. You can get VIP points. You could get $15 from that purchase. Almost $20 from that purchase. Um, just <laughs> don't be stupid, be patient. Uh, so yeah, that is UCS Gunship, and I am so incredibly pumped for this. Let's go. Like, comment, subscribe, share the studio. See you all in the next video. Peace.